But let's go to Keith, who is going to be first up here. What's up, Keith? How's it going? Hey, Bart. Afternoon. Good afternoon. So where is this hand played out of here, Keith? This hand's played out of the Grand Sierra Resort and Casino in Reno, Nevada. I've only heard about, like, Peppermill. <laughs> I didn't even know there were other games in Reno going on. Yeah, there's. I think there's five casinos in Reno that run, Peppermill being by far the largest. Right. So and do you, this is, is this going to be a 2-5 hand here? So this is going to be a 1-2, but there is a $10 straddle. Okay. Oh, wow. A 1-2 with a $10 straddle. Wow, that's, that's pretty crazy. How, how typical is that? So the, the, the game is interesting. It is a 1,000 max, uh, but they offer a match the stack if it goes above that. So it runs sometimes relatively large, but it depends, obviously, on who's playing. So yeah, uh, it is nine-handed, and we are 975 effective. So 975 effective, nine handed in a one, two, 10. Is the 10 under the gun or what? So it's, you can straddle in any position. Uh, this hand, the straddle is on in the low jack. So it's not necessarily a mandatory straddle? No, it's not mandatory. Yeah, you can straddle from any position. I think you can straddle up to $20 maximum. And the villain in this hand is going to be the straddle. And he's a VIP. He's been straddling, I would say, 75 or 80% of hands. Oh, okay. All right. So he's straddling a lot. And then does it go in order from the left of the low jack, basically? So yeah, it starts under the gun. And then the way that straddles work in Reno... Oh, it starts under the gun. Okay. If you raise prior to the straddle, then uh, they have to act. If you don't raise, uh, so there's either calls or folds before him or her, then it goes through them and then they act last. So it's not ultimate last action. It's sort of like a hybrid of the two. Right. So if somebody limps in, it goes through them. But if someone raises, then they have to act first. Yeah, we saw that. I saw that a little bit in Kings with like Vegas button straddles and stuff like that. All right. So nine handed, one, two plus 10 in the low jack and 975 effective. Okay. Exactly. So it folds through the low jack and it comes to me in the cutoff and I have king of spades, jack of clubs, and I raise to $30. In the cutoff. All right. So hero in cutoff goes to 30. Is that about the standard size open? Like when there's a straddle on? Pretty much. Okay. All right. It goes to 30 king jack off. Okay. Yep. And then it folds all the way back around to the straddle who calls. So right. the pot's 63. Low jack calls. He, of course, didn't have an action because it folded through him, but he does call. So, I mean, this is in essence like a regular straddle pot almost, right? Except the fact that he's in the, I mean, you have position on him, right? Agreed. Correct. All right. So it's probably like 60 minus the rake. Okay. Heads up. Yep. Okay. So the flop is queen of spades, 10 of spades, nine of spades. Queen of spades, 10 of spades, nine of spades. So you flop a straight on a monotone board. You have the king of spades in your hand, so you've got a straight flush draw here to a jack as well. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So that's a pretty good flop, heads up. And I mean, sure, I mean, the guy can obviously be calling wide here, kind of like as a, in a situation, like almost like he's kind of last to act. So, you know, you treat it like it's an inevitable, like type of like big blind type of, you know, type of situation here. But I would probably be doing a lot of betting if it gets checked to you. For sure. Yeah, so it does check to me. Okay. And this is primarily why I sent the call in is I wanted to focus on my bet sizing here. So I really don't know what to bet. I was kind of going back and forth uh, on monotone boards. I obviously want to bet small enough to where I feel like I can get called by tens or nines, but I also want to bet large enough so that I deny equity for flush draws. And so I ended up just kind of going right smack in the middle and I bet 30 bucks. Well, what, what flush draws are you trying to deny equity from? Uh, I guess, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say deny equity. Try to get value from those. I want to essentially charge draws. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say the only flush draw that's out there that you deny equity from is the ace of spades, which is probably not going to fold, right, on this flop. <laughs> I mean, if you had king, if you had like a red king jack, sure. I mean, here's the thing. I don't know exactly off the top of my head. There, there's a weird thing. Like there are some bottom part, like if you plug it into a computer solver, there are some bottom parts of your opponent's range, I think, that are non-intuitive uh, bluffs on a board like this facing a C bet, those might comprise of very small pairs with a spade in it. I'm not 100% sure. I've seen some weird stuff like threes, fours with a spade, just trying to take it down. And then if a spade comes off, they might win the pot. The reason why I bring that up is like you almost never find that in a live game. In a one two game without a mandatory straddle, like you're not trying to induce someone to raise bluff you on a monotone board. 
So I wouldn't really be overly concerned with that. And because the board is so uh, connected and there's a fair amount of straight draws and flush draws and stuff that will continue. And even if you go like 40 or 50, even pairs like seven of spades, you know, sevens with the seven of spades, eights with the spade, uh, eight of spades, they're still all going to call you. So I would tend to size up a little bit larger than your half pot size bet here and probably go 40 to 50. This is another small stakes exploit and crush lead poker. Like it's more the absolute pot size right now, which is small. When you bet 40 or 50, it's like, okay, well, sure, it's close to a pot size bet, but it's not the same as betting like a thousand on the river, like into a thousand dollar pot. You still will get looked up. And another thing too is like you get your lightest value, I think, early on in the hand. So I would say I, I would tend to bet sort of like larger than what you did, I would say. Gotcha. So you go 30, right? So I bet 30. All right. Here bets 30. Yep. And then low jack check raises to 100. That's interesting. Those like check raises here to 100. And, you know, because you're heads up and you're the preflop raiser, I could definitely see hands that aren't that wouldn't people think wouldn't think off the top of their head would be check raise. Like I've definitely seen people check raise like two pair here in a situation. Other people play it somewhat cautiously. But I mean, you have the best possible hand here besides a flop flush, right? And so obviously I'm going to continue. I don't necessarily think, uh, I mean, I don't know what the deal with this guy is. Is there merit for bet three bet? I mean, think you actually might consider some people might not think about this off the top and they would always think oh this is just a call there's a possibility you could bet three bet here especially with the king of spades giving you backup just in case the guy flopped the flush if you wanted to like get maximum action from a worse hand here like a lower flop straight two pair some sort of like bottom set type of type of holding so it's something to consider you're only 100 big blinds deep i mean i think a lot of people would just call and kind of you know, see what comes here on the turn. But if I was somehow against an opponent that, that, you know, that I had seen maybe like raise a lot wider than just flop flushes, I, I might consider bet three betting to get it in here. Yeah, for sure. I think his range is uh, a lot of two pairs, a few sets. I, I think he's probably three betting queens pre, so maybe like tens and nines, a lower straight. And then I do think that he has some flushes here, which are probably like baby flushes. So. What's the deal with this guy? Did you say he was a VIP? I think he's a VIP. Yeah, he was relatively drunk and was playing, you know, straddling basically every hand. So I was just trying to get involved in big, big pots with him. I mean, T. Krupta says he's not f- bet three betting a VIP here. I mean, okay, but what, what if the uh, hero just like clicked it back to like 250 here? You know, like if you're afraid like you're going to lose him going for large sizing. I just think it's something to consider. Sounds to me like you just called. I did just call. Yeah, I did think about three betting a little bit. But I just thought if I three bet and he folded like two pair or a baby set or something, that'd be a disaster. So yeah, I just called. Oh, he's not going to fold the baby set. Come on. <laughs> or even bottom two. I think if you go like, uh, you know, like 250. All right. So you make the call and the pot now is going to be like 260, right? Ish. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go to the turn here. And then the turn is the eight of diamonds. So, you know, again, you know, looking at like action killing types of hands versus like non flushes, you know, obviously another spade rolls off or some one liners, people underestimate this, right? Because you've got, you know, if a king or a jack come, which of course you have in your hand, so there's less of a chance of that, it puts out a one liner. And then if an eight comes, it puts out a one liner. Now you have a straight along with the jack, but you've got the nut straight. So you beat a bear jack here. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And I thought it was interesting. He checks. Okay. I mean, <laughs> so. So low jack checks. I mean, the number of times that I've seen somebody check raise with a small flush here and then check a one liner, it, 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 it's almost non-existent because it's going to get checked through so much from the from the hero's perspective here. And the other thing too is I don't even know if this guy has like a straight. Like I almost think that it is some sort of two parish type of combo. I guess maybe once in a while, could he ever have a hand like queen jack here? It's a little bit bizarre, but I would definitely be betting here for sure. Yeah, I agree. Another hand that a friend pointed out to me was that he could have ace queen with the ace of spades that check raises, but I thought that that might three bet pre as well, so I'm not totally sure. But uh, anyway, I, I like to bet 150 here uh, to try to get value out of his two pairs and small sets and stuff like that. So you bet 150. I think that that's probably a fair sizing. So two thirds would be a little bit larger. I think at this point, now you don't want to get into a situation where you get, you know, 
you know, you bet so large that he folds out like a 10 9, you know, type of thing. This is why I was actually a strong advocate for actually bet three betting the flop at the stack size, maximum action from Morris on the flop before the action killing cards came in. All right, so you go 150 here. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I go 150 and he calls. Call. All right, so villain calls, and you're loving life here, except if the board maybe pairs or another spade comes off, which you still probably have the best hand if another spade comes off, but obviously it will cut condense like the the calling range in a certain situation. 560 to the river again, hero with king jack off with the king of spades, queen 10, nine, all spades. In this kind of straddled setup, weird straddled setup in Reno, he gets check raised on the flop. Now, the villain checks a one-liner here to a jack. Hero bets 150. Queen 10, 9. All spades turns an 8. Hero bets 150 with king jack. Villain calls. Pot's 560, okay? Yep. And then the river is the ace of hearts. Ace of hearts. So the only thing that that changes would be somehow if he had been playing some sort of check raise with like the ace of spades plus pair. Right, like you said, like an ace queen, ace ten type of hand, something like that, right? With the ace of spades. Yep. I think. I mean, I don't I mean ace jack's already straight, and I don't think it plays this way, right? On when the straight comes in on the turn. So, you know, unless he was somehow finding like a race with like ace five with the ace of spades or something like it, I find it a little bit hard to believe that he's gonna end up with just a single pair of aces here. It's probably gonna be an aces up type of holding. And the thing that's kind of interesting here is that like if the opponent has the ace of spades, you said he was a VIP, so he's probably not thinking about this at this level. If he checks to you and you bet the river, you very well might get called down a lot by aces up because the guy thinks you don't have a flush. And what, what's what's the hero betting with here? I mean, obviously hero could have a jack, but I, I, I do like the spot here. Yeah. So I think, again, this is sort of a bet sizing discussion. I was just trying to figure out what's the maximum value I can get on the river here. I assume low jack checks, right? Yeah, sorry, low jack checks. Okay, so low jack checks, pot's 560. You guys have put in 250, 280. So you probably have, what, 700 or so left in your stack? Something like that, yep. Um, I would kind of go chunky, but not insane. Put it Like, I, I might go like 350 to, th mm, 350 to 400 here, something like that. Gotcha. I ended up going a little bit smaller. I was worried that he was going to find folds with two pair. And so I bet 250. Okay, so here we goes 250 here. And by the way, I think you said in the email, you had asked me, is this too thin? And I think you know my answer, right? Just from what I said, I'm talking about the hand, right? Yeah, I, I had uh, a few friends that I spoke to tell me that I could get value owned here by a baby flush, but I just felt like with the check back on the turn, that's just never really happening. Yeah, like you said, like how often is a guy checking the turn on a one liner if he had a baby flush here? Why would he ever do it? Just wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, right? You'd want to build the pot up a lot. It doesn't, he's not scared of it. It's not like it's the eight of spades on the turn, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. So you go 250. Yep. And it calls. The one calls. And you table your hand. And we win. I don't know what he had. I assume two pair or a small set or something like that. What was the pace of his calling, just out of curiosity here? It was a tank call. Probably took him a minute and a half, two minutes, something like that. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I mean, obviously, we some people will get on us. Oh, well, there, no reveal. No, well, we know the hero won, won the hand, right? <laughs> By the way, if something crazy happened here, where the villain check raised all in, what would you think about? I mean, it, 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 again, you know, it's funny when people, you know, there was an old, some of these like almost like depreciated old adages in poker. It's like, well, you need to know what to do. If you need to like factor in, if you get raised, if you're considering betting on the river, that's a kind of an old poker knowledge. And my, I actually disagree with that. Given the way that this hand goes down, you are check raised so infrequently on the river here that why waste the mental energy about thinking about that? You know what I'm saying? It would just would be interesting if you did get check raised all in. I don't think, I don't know if I could find a fold here as played. A guy's going to check raise a like a nut flush type of hand then check call turn on a one liner and then go for a check raise on the river i it would be bizarre the thing that would concern me is that he would have to be almost like turning ace x into a bluff which is not common at this level but again it's going to happen so infrequently yeah i did think about that because i was trying to think if he jams river what are his bluffs here and it feels like his bluffs are hands like ace queen with the ace of spades but is he really turning aces up into a bluff at the end right that's the whole thing 
it would be really bizarre though because of the the flop and turn play though. That's why, like I said, it's it it, it happened so infrequently. You don't have to necessarily think about it. But I appreciate the call. Thank you very much.